beginner tutorial, we will learn to work with the basic image functions within Doodly. This video does not teach the methods to perform the animations on the title screen. Let's learn to walk before we try to run. We will teach you about file type support, importing images, image controls, grid usage, and where to obtain free commercial use images. We are using version 2.4.12 to create this video, but these instructions will work on any Doodly version. The required skills for successfully making it through this tutorial are being familiar with the Doodly user interface. If you do not possess this skill, please watch the Doodly basic tutorials before continuing. Basic computer skills, the ability to left click and drag and drop. Computer navigation skills, finding your files to import them into Doodly. This free video tutorial took over 100 hours to create. YouTube judges a channel by subscribers, likes, shares, and video hours watched. We ask for all our hard work, please use those buttons and allow this video to run until the end. Thank you. Doodly uses a constrained proportion resizing method, so we cannot resize a single side of an image or asset without affecting the other sides. And according to a Doodly article from February 2020, the maximum allowed image size that can be utilized within Doodly is 1920 by 1080. Now this would make sense since the software currently only supports a 1080p video at its maximum size. Doodly supports multiple different image types. SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. These types of images are extremely nice and desired because of their scalability and the fact that when you increase size, the image doesn't lose quality. There are some pros and cons to SVG images. Some of the pros are SVG images come with paths automatically built in for the Doodly hand. That's amazing. Doodly support reports this as being the best quality image to utilize for their software. And the file size is generally much smaller because the imported scalability of the image can be much smaller than a rasterized image since it doesn't lose quality when you blow it up. So this makes your video a smaller size. Now, some of the cons to an SVG image are, according to reports from users, the rendering time within Doodly may be severely increased if there are too many pathways automatically created by the SVG image. Automatic pathways may not always produce the desired effect that you want with the Doodly hand on the image. And most free online SVG converters are not good. If you know of any good free online SVG converters, please let everyone know in the comments below. Color depth is also not as good as a rasterized image, so scalable graphics work great with cartoon type images, logos, icons, graphs, and other types of images that don't require an in-depth color palette. PNG, Portable Network Graphics also called a ping image. They're compressed with lossless format. Lossless means when you compress the image to a smaller file size, you don't lose any quality in the image. What more can a web designer want? Ping files can have a transparent background, but cannot contain any animation. They don't have the ability to host multiple frames to provide the appearance of animation. Pings are the choice of most website designers because of their lossless format. These types of files are an excellent alternative to an SVG file if you're looking for a more in-depth color image. Almost every program will support saving as a PNG file. Even Microsoft Paint that comes with Windows 10 natively supports saving as a PNG file. JPG Joint Photographic Experts Group or JPEG, is the most common image format on the internet. It is a lossy image format which means it loses quality the more compression it receives. 
the file size of a JPEG can be extremely small, which makes it a popular choice for image use online. A good compression for a JPEG image would be between 60% and 75%. If you try to compress below 60%, even though that's a possibility, the image starts to appear distressed and that's not a good look. Animated GIF Graphic Interchange Format or GIF Image They allow for multiple image frames to be combined together just like an older movie to provide you that appearance of animation. These animations take quite a while to create but can look really amazing and entertaining when they are completed. In our working with audio tutorial, that GIF animation in the beginning we created specifically for that tutorial took us over 20 hours to create, but it came out extremely nice and was a job well done. GIF animations are an extremely nice way to spice up your video and add that ability to animate more than one object at a time. In the last section of this video tutorial, we will show you where to obtain free commercial use images that will need very little editing to get them ready for importing into your Doodly project. We cannot import images into the scene section, so we must import all images into either the character or the prop sections. When importing images, it is important to understand that only SVG images come with built-in paths for the hand to follow. Any other type of imported image and the hand will default to drawing that image diagonally from the upper left corner to the lower right corner. Therefore, as a beginner, it's best to set the image to fade into your project if you're not comfortable with creating paths. Most images in a square or rectangular frame look better faded in to the canvas versus drawn into the canvas, in my opinion. See our beginner mistakes tutorial for a comparison and you decide which one you prefer. There are numerous image controls we have available to us as a doodler. Edit, asset settings, flip, bring forward, send backward, and delete. Let's talk about editing first. Editing the image is mainly geared around creating paths. Proper path usage is considered more of an advanced technique, so even though we talk about it in this video, creating paths is outside the scope of this video tutorial. But we will talk about one function in the editing section, reveal mode. This allows you to tell Doodly to draw or fade your asset into the canvas. When your reveal mode is set to fade for an image you've imported into Doodly, the entire image fades in just like you would expect. This fade in behavior is not the same with assets that come with Doodly or that were purchased from the marketplace. If you set this setting to fade, the hand will still draw the outline of the image into the canvas and then fade the colors into the canvas ruining the complete fade-in effect you may be going for. See our smooth fade-in tutorial for how to get around this limitation. Asset settings. Let's take a look at the settings available to us when we're clicking on the gear icon above the asset. Doodly center aligns assets on the screen to the X coordinate instead of left aligning them, so this is not an option for a beginner to use when aligning assets. Width and height are constrained in this version. There are multiple recommendations from users inside the feature request for Doodly to make a non-constrained proportion for both imported images and assets that come with Doodly, and it is marked as considered, but it has been that way since 2018. Constrained proportions means that you cannot adjust one side of an asset without affecting the other sides. Rotate can be useful since Doodly lacks the ability to snap when placing images or rotating. The rotate setting helps us when an asset has been manually turned on the canvas and we want to get it back to its original zero degree position or a specific angle. Flip allows us to change the direction of an asset. This is sometimes very useful and other times 
not so much. There is an icon in the image toolbar that allows for flipping of an asset as well, and that's a little easier to use than opening this window. Color changes the outline color of an asset. This is most notable when the doodly rainbow is disabled. Opacity allows for fading in an asset to a certain degree to allow it to appear transparent. Enter Animation provides the ability to tell Doodly to draw an animation onto the canvas or to do nothing. Exit Animation allows the user to tell Doodly to erase an asset before the scene transition occurs. Invert is a newer feature to this version that allows an asset to have their colors inverted. When using this feature on a chalkboard, a black image will not appear according to a Doodly article. The Doodly rainbow inside this area is also a newer feature and a much welcomed one at that. This allows for disabling the color for an individual asset for that scene. I've seen some really well-designed videos using this feature. There are a couple of other items on the image toolbar that we will touch base on quickly. Flip, as we've mentioned earlier, is a shorter way to change the direction of an asset. Bring forward and send backwards refers to the doodly layers to the right hand side of the canvas. This will allow easy use for moving assets up and down in the layers portion. I don't use these much personally, I found that they don't always move the layers when clicked, so I drag and drop the layers on the right hand side, but that's a discussion for another video. Using the grid will allow for aligning assets on the canvas unless an imported image is used as a background. If there is an imported image used as a background covering up the canvas, then the grid cannot be seen, and then using a line asset will be the only option to left or right align assets onto the canvas. All websites listed on this page offer free commercial use images for your projects. Pixabay is amongst the most popular, but not the only website available for free commercial use images. Let's take a look at Unsplash.com. They offer some pretty fantastic images and their license states free commercial use. RealisticShots.com has some extremely nice images. Then we have Pixabay. We all know Pixabay. Life of Pix has a lot of good images inside there. You have Stock Snap and Kaboom Pix. Always read the licensing agreements on the websites before you use the images. You want to make sure that you're still able to use them regardless of what you hear in this video or see in any comments or on any websites. If you are interested in more websites that allow for using Im images for commercial use beyond what is listed in this video, check out the website listed in the description for Social Media Today. Their article is from 2015 but the, all the licenses we checked out were still good and valid for commercial use images. There are a lot of different effects that you can make with Doodly, and we've seen a lot of creativity happen. Keep learning and keep watching our tutorials, and soon enough, you'll be creating images just like this one. Hey, we'd love to hear what you think about our videos. Leave a comment below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications for our next set of tutorials.